Mississippi State hires a former Ole Miss offensive coordinator to be their head coach. Ole Miss hires a former state head coach to be an analyst. We are not the same. You are locked on Ole Miss. Your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hi, I'm Stephen Willis, a former staff member at Ole Miss and a 10-year veteran member of the national media with Yahoo Sports. Also did a little time in Nashville at WSMV. Today on the show, we talk about Lane Kiffing hiring Zach Arnett as the defensive analyst and why it helps Ole Miss in their playoff quest. Spring practice has started. And we let you know what the plan is for this spring and where they are currently. We talk about this ridiculous thing on three tried to do yesterday involving Lane Kiffin and Florida State. And Madison Scott is coming back to school next year. That's cool stuff. Just a reminder, the Grove Collective is doing their March to Victory campaign this month. What does that mean? This is their new NIL campaign for Ole Miss Athletics, and their hope is to raise $10 million and have 10,000 total members by the end of March. It's March Madness-type competition that puts regions of the U.S. competing with other regions to see who can give the most to Ole Miss is the Grove Collective in their NIL. The, um, the Sweet 16 ends March 18th. Let's keep Ole Miss Athletics at the forefront and go to thegrovecollective.com slash march to victory to help make that happen. This is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're free and available in all the podcast apps and on YouTube. Thanks for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen every day and a special hello to the everydayers that make the show what it is. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. So very big deal. Zach Arnett got called up to Ole Miss over the last couple of days at some point. He's starting out, he's going to be a defensive analyst, and it's always good whenever players from Ole Miss's farm system make it up to the show and they make it to the big leagues. And Zach Garnett was able to do that, even though his time at Mississippi State ended unceremoniously. No, I'm just kidding. Um, the rivalry stuff is going to be fun, and we are going to poke fun at Mississippi State fans. But honestly, this would be an excellent hire with or without the Mississippi State angle. And that is because of what Ole Miss is trying to do, what he can do, and why this is a nice fit. Now, if you look at Ole Miss, the Lane Kiffin offense, they're always going to put up points. They're always going to score points. They're always in the top 10 nationally in offense. It's going to come down to this Ole Miss team being able to play defense to determine how far they can go. And with Pete Golding in year one, the defense really took off. They averaged giving up like 23 points a game. They're like fourth in the SEC. This change for Ole Miss defensively was kind of a major deal. And a lot of the games during last season was won by the defense. But Lane Kiffin saw steps where he was, in, he was improving the talent that is on the field, which he undoubtedly did. But what does he need to do to improve coaching? He made a change at cornerbacks coach and brought in B. Brown, who was the defensive coordinator at Cincinnati, has an extremely glowing reputation of being a strong back end of the defense, defensive coordinator. So you have Pete Golden and B. Brown right there on the start on the field. Those are your co-coordinators. Pete Golden coaches the linebackers. That's where his positionary um Sits Randall Joiners on the defensive line. The defensive line is going to be utterly freaking stacked. And Pete Golding, for lack of a better word, he's known for putting out good defensive linemen. If you look back to Marcus Davenport, all the way back at UTSA, Pete Golding has been known as somebody that put defensive linemen in the league. So the weak point, honestly, was probably the position group that he coaches. Now, I'm not saying he's not a good coach. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm saying that just out of the three areas, 
the linebackers is probably positionally the weak link, weak link as far as coaching, and it's not even really a weak link. But Lane Kiffin did it again by bringing an analyst in Zach Arnett, who over the last several years, he's been a linebacker whisperer, for lack of a better word, to where they do a lot of the stuff that Joey Dunn did. It's from essentially that tree of what Joey Dunn did at Mississippi State. And we all remember Joey Dunn, what he did at Ole Miss. And Zach Arnett does a lot of the same stuff from the linebacker position, can be pretty aggressive. I see a situation, the way this is shaping up, to where Ole Miss is going to be an extremely attack defense moving forward. It just, it just is. And you look at what they have on the defensive line where they could probably get away with rushing four and dropping seven. But if you look at their other hires, no, they want to maximize what B. Brown does, okay? And them being ball hawks in the secondary, they want the quarterback to get uncomfortable. To get uncomfortable, they're going to have to heat him up. So you have all of that talent on the defensive line. You have all of that talent at linebacker, and you're going to have different schemes on the defensive side and uh, defensive line side and at linebacker to where you can pr pressure the quarterback from different angles so they can never get never get comfortable. Um, I give Pete Golding all the credit in the world for saying, hey, I, I know I'm good at what I do. I have plenty of confidence in what I do. These people, we need to bring in people that can make me better. And they learned that from what Nick Saban did at Alabama. And I think that's pretty cool. But the thing from Zach Barry, it looked like Zach Barry was the person that kind of broke this story. He's the first place I saw it at. So congratulations to Zach on this. Ole Miss has hired former Mississippi State head coach Zach Arnett. He replaced Mark Leach after he passed away in 2022 and went five and six last season. He was previously at San Diego State for eight years and then the D.C. linebacker coach at MSU. Um, after spring practice today, Lane Kiffin kind of had an impromptu press conference, which he kind of had to do. But Coach Kiffin on Zach Arnett joining the staff said, I had a lot of respect for Zach, and I thought they did a great job over there at Starkville, and they caused people a lot of problems. It's been in discussions. I learned from Coach Saban. It's a two-way street. You give people opportunities, and they learn from you. But also, we don't just hire anybody because they were head coaches. This was a really good fit that way. He came down and met with me and Coach Golding. We're excited to put him in the defensive room, especially with the conference knowledge. It's going to allow the defense to look a little bit differently. It's not going to look completely like it did a year ago. Now, last year's defense was good. They were legitimately good defensively last year. Now, they got kind of out-talented by Georgia and, and LSU and at times by a &M. But those are three of the better talented teams in the conference on the offensive side of the ball. With B. Brown coming in, that allows you to change the way your defense plays a little bit. With Zach Arnett, that allows you to put in some schematic things. Like I said, pressure from different angles. The stuff that made Nathaniel Watson such a good football player a year ago, maybe that is Chris Paul. Maybe that is Suntaram Perkins in 2024. All I know is that Zach Arnett with linebackers made Jet Johnson a legit threat at linebacker. He wasn't the fastest guy in the world. He wasn't the best linebacker in the world. He was a ton of heart. But Zach Arnett, in his scheme, put him in position to where he could be one of the conference leaders in tackles. Now, here's the other thing that you're going to hear from Mississippi State fans. Well, we ran him off at head coach. Yeah, we're not hiring him to be a head coach. Well, his defensive efficiency, I, I saw this from Bo Brown, Bounds. His defensive efficiency wasn't in the 70th percentile or better the whole time he was in college. Yeah, we're not hiring to be a def defensive coordinator. We are hiring him to be an assistant linebacker coach. Think about that. We hired Mississippi State's head coach and a good defensive coordinator that gave a lot of people problems over the last year or so, last two or three years, as our assistant linebackers coach. That is a pretty cool thing. I think Ole Miss's defense right now, with the advent of getting Zach Arnett, got better. The defense got better. P. 
Pete Golding, B. Brown, Zach Arnett. That's three former Power Five coordinators that are in the same room. They also have another coordinator in, I forget his first name, but his last name is Spanos. He came down after being the coach at UConn. He's an analyst as well. So there's a lot of coordinators, a lot of talented people in that room. It's a big deal. It is. When you look and think of how good this offense could be in 2024, this defense has a chance to be special and has an elite top shelf coaching staff that has been assembled by Lane Kiffin and honestly by Lane Kiffin and Keith Carter, I guess you can say. But pretty impressive stuff indeed. Thanks again for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen of the day. It's hard to believe the first day of spring practice gets bumped to the second segment of the show, but here we are. We'll talk about that next. Passion, drive, and patience, what brings home the winning trophy, is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers to roof racks exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style. eBay Motors has got you covered. And with 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. And with all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay's guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts, of Locked On, plus our national shows that cover every single league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. All right, spring practice has begun. Now, um, I talked to, honestly, a couple of parents, and and they were like, yeah, yeah, spring football is going to happen after spring break. Spring break is next week. Um, and then all of a sudden, the day before they actually have their first spring break practice or spring practice, they just start going. And this is the reason that I think that this happened. I don't think there's anything nefarious going on. Uh, I, th- I think there's a concert again, real similar to last spring. And because of that, the spring practice for them to do their preferred Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday routine that they have from time to time, or, or is it Wednesday, Friday, or what you know, whatever it is, I think this week's a little bit different, but it'll be Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And whenever they have that, it would have taken it past April 13th, which is the Grove Bowl, which in a similar situation to last year, it gets pushed back where there's a couple more practices after the Grove Bowl is played. So I think they did these acclimation practices like they're you're prone to do in this situation, do, do a couple of them before spring, spring break, come back after spring break and get going again as well. But it's nice, nice weather. It's nice to see those, those blue skies out there on the practice field. The amazing thing to me personally is how much different it looks than even when I was there. And the only thing in this picture that's like a major structure other than the towers because the towers weren't there. We had some rickety towers that we just had no business climbing up into, but the parking garage was not there when I was there. And that's the main thing that changes that skyline is the parking garage. And, you know, we did a situation to where that parking garage is, was another football practice field because there was three fields outside and the offensive field was up there literally where that parking garage is now. Ole Miss having two fields and the indoor. I mean, it's they're still in good shape, but it's funny that that skyline has changed a little bit. Lane Kiffin talked about Jackson Dart's off-season medical procedure. We saw a picture about a month ago of Jackson Dart kind of on a cart or a bike or whatever because he had he had his leg cleaned up a little bit and had a little procedure done. Uh, and 
Lane Kiffin talked about what he's able to do. He said Jackson threw seven on seven today and some routes on air, but he did have an off-season procedure and he's very limited movement-wise. It's a lower body issue, so he can still throw. I think you'll continue to get back. Um, every cost has a benefit. The benefit is the other people are getting reps and being able to play in his absence. Walker Howard and Austin Simmons. Um, Austin Simmons even coming back over here from playing baseball. He's done a great job. Like I said earlier, and I've said for a couple weeks going into spring practice, because of that procedure, the quarterback competition between Austin Simmons and Walker Howard is actually beginning right now that you need to pay attention to. This is going to be the biggest quarterback competition in the history of the University of Mississippi. And if it's not, if something happens before next spring, that's because there's probably a clear winner of who's going to get that job to begin with. We've all seen that Austin Simmons has kind of become the dude over on the baseball field. Six up, six down. It seems like every time he was an inner squad, he's, he was like an inning at work, and he struck out too. He's got like a 92, 93-mile-an-hour two-seam fastball. He has a nice curveball that kind of has a, a fun shape to it that you really only see from these Ole Miss pitchers as kind of like what Nikhazy did and um, what – Elliot did stuff like that. Those lefties with those big looping curveballs. It's cool. I think that Austin Simmons potentially needs a third pitch. Um, I think you'll get there, but I say all of that to say this, the people I've talked to, and it might not mean anything. Austin Simmons is not going to miss any football. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What is going on? He's not missing football. It could be a situation over the next month or so of the season to where they're doing Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, those practice rounds. Austin just doesn't pitch on Saturday. He pitches on Sunday or he pitches on Friday. Um, a situation he's not pitching on Tuesdays in midweek. Maybe he's throwing on Wednesdays in midweek. So it's a situation to where he is going to get as many reps as he needs to get. So do not freak out about a quarterback playing baseball in the spring because Austin Simmons, from everything I've been told, is getting all of his work in on the football field. And this isn't even a football takes preference over baseball. It's a he is literally doing as much as he can on everything. It's not even a preference thing. I just don't think he's giving up one or the other either way. Now, Austin Simmons throwing 93 from the left-hand side as a true freshman, that's special, and that's something we need to monitor and keep an eye on. But his work on the football field with his leadership of bringing people in to throw and acting well beyond his years, that's something to keep an eye on as well. They're going to close down most of spring practice, well, at least right now. Once they come back from spring break, who knows? Maybe it's a situation to where they're trying to get through these early practices and just completely have them closed down. But I think eventually they're going to open up some Saturdays. If not, that kind of lets you know how serious Lane Kiffin has taken this season. If he just he's going to close everything down, he's going to be overprotective. You can kind of see where his mind is about this season. So we'll see as this goes. Lane Kiffin's supposed to talk on Tuesdays or something like that. I think um, the people in Oxford are going to be able to go in for 15 minutes or something like that um, on Tuesdays. Thursdays, there'll be player interviews or something like that, and there's just nothing on Saturdays as it sits right now. Like I said, that is something that's going to be subject to change, I do believe, once they get settled in. I mean, it could be a situation where they have enough people down or something like that. They just they just don't want that type of information getting out. But spring practice, the 2024 season has begun. Whether or not Ole Miss makes a playoff, it has begun. And the picture that we got today, because every time there's a practice, Ole Miss picks or Ole Miss Athletics or whoever takes a picture that's a pretty cool shot. Got this one of Trey Amos guarding Trey Harris, the two Trey's out there. 
Um, Jackson Dart actually tweeted about this picture, talking about how he's a dude. Trey Am Trey Amos is one of the best man coverage cornerbacks that was in the Southeastern Conference a year ago. The only reason he wasn't starting at Alabama, and this wasn't like at a Ponock school, this was at Alabama, is Alabama had multiple first-round draft pick level cornerbacks on the field. Trey Amos is going to be a stud. Ole Miss practicing in the powder blue, by the way, and they're in their acclimation shirt and shorts and all of that. And so they're doing one-on-ones, and they're doing all of the drill work that honestly they're probably looking forward to as well. I'm pretty fired up about what Ole Miss has in spring practice. One out of 15 is down. Grow Bowl is on April 13th, and we're going to talk about that all the way until the Grow Bowl starting on August, April 15th through April 30th will be the transfer portal. We'll talk about the players getting into the portal and players going to different schools around the country that should kick off about May 1st to June 1st and take you into mid-June. And then you have the doldrums of a couple of weeks of late June, and then you get the SEC media day, you get all the Texas, Oklahoma, and we're in football season proper. I can't wait for what's going to happen. We, we're there. We've survived the last couple of weeks. We, we are there to where we can go and count on some content a little while as well. I do much better, as everybody knows, when it's football season. The show is a better show when it's football season. I, I'm just better at it. That's the that's the staff I was on. That's the world I know. I know inside the staff. I know the national media. I know um, recruiting. I all of that is comfortable to me. Basketball. I got Tim Thomas on for basketball. I've got Derek Vandy Griff on for ba um, baseball. I've got Brantley Sanderson on for women's basketball. And I've got Josh Guest that comes on talking about just basically fan stuff being around o Oxford. We're going to have AC Roberts on the show, giving his perspective of being a fan and getting ready for this football season. Kara McCutcheon is going to come back on the show and do fan stuff. We're going to talk and have fun as a fan base, about this potential playoff run. We're going to make this fun. After this is over, whether Ole Miss makes the playoff or not, you're going to be able to look back on this and go, you know, we, we enjoyed that. Thanks for that. And that's my goal. So it should be a lot of fun indeed. So still more to come on Locked On Ole Miss, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. On three, did some stupid clickbaity nonsense about Lane Kiffin and Florida State. We talk about that next. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlight to in depth analysis. Fire TV has an amazing viewing experience with smart TVs as well as Fire TV sticks that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channel lets you dive into all the in-game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and a ton more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on the Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash LockedOnFireTV. Thanks for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen of the day. And shout out to the everydayers. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows that cover every single league. 
Find Locked On Sports today now, available on the free Fire TV channels app. Be part of history. All right, so an interesting thing happened yesterday. Now, Chris Lowe did a story on ESPN, okay? And it was all about the Nick Saban retirement. That that was the genesis of it, okay? But there was one, one part of it that everybody took on and they gravitated it to it. And when we talk about a world of manufactured drama, it's here. Yeah, I mean, this is what they did. And the way it is right here, Florida state officials feared Mike Norvell was heading to Alabama and were prepared to get Lane Kiffin. Oh, big eyes. In fact, in the wee hours of Friday morning, the fear of Florida state officials were Norvell was close to trading his FSU Garnet for his Alabama Crimson. So the whole gist of this story was that Florida state really liked Lane Kiffin. And if Mike Norvell went to Alabama, they were going to try and get Lane Kiffin. Cool. That's great. That's really, really fun. Here's the problem. My wife could leave me at any moment. I love my wife, but she could go on and trade up. Now, if that happens, what? I, I think I'm going to go after and I'm going to um, go get Sydney Sweeney to be my um, next wife. That That's the equivalent of what Florida State um, said there. And, and, on three and everybody else is on this in this manufactured drama in order to make it sound like Lane Kiffin is doing that because he's such a clickbait name and not even in a negative way, but anytime Lane Kiffin's in the title, people view it. A situation like that can make it really take off. Now, in a real life situation, I do think that Florida State would probably take a pass at Lane Kiffin. Do I think Lane Kiffin would leave? No. If, if Lane Kiffin would have had the opportunity next year, go to Florida State, he would not. You would not go out of the fire, frying pan into a fire that you don't know where you're going to end up. You don't know what the conference is going to look like. And you're in the middle of a messy divorce to try to leave your conference. Lane Kiffin isn't leaving a team where he had a chance to go to the playoff to where he knew that could happen, to go give that up to make another bit of a rebuild happen again. I don't believe that. Not at all. I don't even think Florida State fans believe that. But you know who does believe that? On three in clickbait type situations. Now, like I said, I like clickbait. I think everybody that doesn't do clickbait fails. It's over. Um, so you need to do that a little bit. But this is like next level clickbaity type stuff. And I kind of don't appreciate that, honestly. Now, change the subject before we get out of here today again. Madison Scott from the Ole Miss Lady Rebs is returning. Coach Yo um, put out it's like, hey, this picture. When I knew Maddie was coming to Ole Miss, my first All-American, my first big get, before Maddie committed, she said, how far do you think we could go here at Ole Miss? Knowing the uphill battle, I said, by your senior year, sweet 16. But God, I am elated to do this with 24. It, it, it's, it's a pretty cool deal. I think Ole Miss made the Sweet 16 a year ago. Ole Miss has a chance to go even higher in the realm of women's college basketball. But Madison Scott, who is the most talented player on the Ole Miss Lady Rebels team, is coming back. We will continue to talk about spring practice and any other news. Again, Zach Arnett getting called up to Ole Miss. Um, that's a pretty cool story indeed. Thanks for making the Lockdown Ole Miss podcast your first listen. Every day as we have player interviews slated for this weekend, and we wait on the most anticipated football season at Ole Miss maybe ever, and you can hear about it all here. But for your second listen, Lockdown has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Lockdown Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Lockdown, plus our national shows that cover every single league. Find Locked On TV today. Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. For those of you on YouTube, we'll send you there right now. Hotty toddy, everyone.